been a minute and uh, I have a lot to update you guys with what I've been up to. Hello. So let me explain what I've been up to. So I was working in a garage before I moved to this new one that I actually built myself with my friend Hector. He's the man. I was, you know, gonna post videos about it, but I don't know if you want to be in videos about building the shop. My siblings say, why did you just post videos about building the shop? But you know, my own mistake, I should have done it, but I was also trying to get this done. I was working in a small garage, uh, one by one, big enough for the old truck. You can kind of see it right there in the rear view. And uh, I never finished that. I showed everyone what was going on with it. I picked it up, I washed it, and that was it. I fell off the earth. I stopped posting about it. I only posted Instagrams about it. I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do with it yet. So I kind of just went, I was all over the place, ADD. That's how it is sometimes with me. I kind of bounce between projects here and there. And then I decided to buy a boat. Oh, so, right over here. Uh, now the plan with boat is simple. Buy it for dirt cheap, fix it quick with all the holes that were in it. It wasn't this bad, it was better when I bought it. You know, use it, fish on it a little bit, and then flip it at the end of the summer. This was this past summer. That never happened, as per usual with me and my ADD. I got the boat, destroyed it a little bit by building two cradles that were not good for the boat. Now a cradle, it holds the boat when it's out of the water. If you don't have a trailer, it's easier to work on. Definitely messed it up a little bit more than it was supposed to. And I decided, okay, well, I need a little bit of a workshop to work in. So I bought two tents, and I built a deck, put two tents on there, put this boat in there and the truck, and said, okay, that'll work perfectly. And of course, I was wrong, and it didn't work out perfectly. So in my sense of working, I like an organized workspace, because if I'm not organized, I will not work properly, and I will be disorganized. And my ADD kitchen in a little bit, and then I kind of go all over the place, like I'm rambling right now. Scratch it. I wanted something that I could do myself. I bought a building from Versatube. Versatube, thank you. It's a great building experience. It was easy to build, get up fast, and uh, got the inside all finished out. I wanted tools on the wall so I could be organized. So I put tools on the wall with nails and everything. As you can see, I'm a big red tool sponsor. Milwaukee sponsor me. I can put your tools to the torch test. Got face masks, a little space heater for when it gets cold out, even though I'm all heated in here. A bunch of stuff right here, a square, these are good for welding, when you want to hold two pieces of metal together. Levels, vices, you name it, it's up there. Not everything, of course, but it's there. And I thought, you know, it's time. You need something to work in organized. And I wanted to get my projects done finally, because I can't just keep on looking at them every day and neglecting them, because that's how they get worse. So let's get this shop to the tip. Oh, that's my TV. It only has one station for now, but it'll change. So let's get the shop to the test. Let's see if it actually lives up to its name. I've worked on it for six months. There's a truck. Uh, that will be updated in a future video. But I had to buy a new cab because that one's pretty shot. But it's all good. But let's get on to the boat today. What our process of this is going to be is sanding, prepping the area for fiberglass, mixing some resin, and laying some glass on all those holes right there, right there, right there, right there, right there, everywhere. Just basically everywhere. But Let's get started. So the number one thing when working with any fiberglass is that you should be properly dressed. As you can see, I'm not. So, one second. Oh. I know you're thinking, yes, you look like Walter White and Jesse Pinkman from Breaking Bad. But with fiberglassing and any resin mixing or anything like that, you want to wear the proper safety gear because this stuff is no joke. If you inhale fiberglass shards, it, it, it's not good for your lungs. You don't want anything bad going into your lungs. So. Make sure you're wearing the proper gear. So, this is number one. This is a suit for fiberglassing. It's got a hood. I'm kind of upset because it normally has the booties where I can put them into my boots, but not this one. I don't know what happened. You guys gotta up your stuff. And you want the proper safety gear, such as. So the first line of safety, or safety equipment, as I would say, for this portion of sanding, is my full 3M face shield respirator because these fiberglass particles get everywhere in the air and my friend that does this work also recommended getting this versus anything else because he said it's the most annoying thing when you get this stuff in your eyes and you don't want to get in your lungs. So this is good because it seals your whole face. 
and you can tighten it down onto your face so that way when you're sanding you're good. Obviously don't wear glasses, I just need to wear them for right now. Most annoying part about this portion of building a boat or restoring a boat is the sanding portion because you have to always wear this, it get itchy, it's annoying, you wear the face mask, but again safety is number one priority on this channel. And it's annoying because the sanding just takes forever and is the most tedious thing to do. But you gotta start somewhere to get where you wanna go. Apologies, I had to go grab this outside. Uh, step two, you wanna get your angle grinder with a sandable disc on it and get the attachment because it's much easier to hook up your sandpaper. I use 36 grit Diablo discs. I have a bunch of them on the wall because you use them fast, but today we're only gonna scratch up the boat a little bit on the inside and then clean the area, lay some glass, get some resin mix and go from there. But I recommend using this versus uh, duct taping it to that because I know people that have done that. You know who you are, I'm not gonna roast you. And you could cut your finger off, but do not nick your finger with this either because it will hurt a lot. I've done it before. We're gonna talk about that. So, I know I said I was a red tool guy. I do like the Walt too. I didn't see a Milwaukee one. But Milwaukee, if you wanna sponsor me and send me one, I will do a product review. So let's go on to step three. So I recommend in this portion of fiberglass sanding or any kind of sanding, you should probably do it outside just because it's a little bit safer. There's good airflow and it won't stay piled up in one area with you. In my case, I can't do that. There's a bunch of holes in the boat and I have tape on the back of the holes to keep it all leveled as a backing for when I glass. So if I just move it outside to unlevel surface, it's just gonna, all that time gonna be wasted from when I put the tape on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wear my full face shield, I have clothes I'm going to wear, and tape my wrist so no dust goes into my suit, along with the same tape of my ankles. I have a big air fan, and I'm going to turn on the full blast, and I have the front door of the shop open, so it's just going to push all that air out with the dust. I have a zipper on a dust shield barrier, I have the door for the tool shop going to close, and the window with the screens on closed also. So if something were to happen and some dust particles were supposed to leave this side, at least they'll stay in the shop area and not the tool side. So when sanding an area like this with a crack, you want to make it a little bit more flush, even though it's pretty good, but just get texture to it. Don't push hard with the angle grinder because this stuff is very, very thin. You do not want to burn through it because over here you can see in the past when I burned through it, they put an indent right there. So I have to fix that and then reshape it underneath. Take your time. I recommend starting from back to front and also working in this area first on the port side and on that area on the starboard side after. Left on a boat is port, right is starboard, that's the bow, that's the transom. I'm also a boat captain so I'll teach you guys a little bit about that, how boats work and everything like that if you want also. We got all our safety gear on, wear your muffs too because this stuff's loud, it gets annoying, your ears start ringing at the end. Don't forget to put this on, <laughs> I mean it. And uh, let's get started to the most time consuming and tedious portion of working on this boat. But in the end, it'll all be worth it. clean workspace to lay some fiberglass. When it comes to getting all the dust out of your boat after sanding it down, you want to vacuum it, use a rag with acetone. I like the working section so I go from this way to the front and then from the front to the back so I don't miss any spots of the boat when I'm wiping it down after. And I also like to get into these little crannies and nooks right here just because you don't want to forget that because at the end sometimes you want to roll your fiberglass up to here with the resin and it's a really good bond. So after you do that with the acetone rag, you should Back it out one more time just to get like any little particles that came and fell down from the side when you wipe it down. And the next step is going to make some patches out of 1708. We're going to start from the hole and go to the big and we're going to put one big one down and we're going to work our way from the back to the front. 
So now we're gonna start making our patches. This is 1708. This is what we're gonna use for the inside of the boat for all these little holes on the sides and on the bottom of the floor. I made this jig so that way I can roll it out easily. I put a closet rod down the middle, two axes, a piece of wood to stop it from the rod coming out the side, wheels on the bottom and reinforce it so that way it won't, you know, twist or bend or at all. So this piece is dirty. We're not gonna use this, but we're gonna make little patches like this. We're gonna make, you know, eight inches by 15 inches, eight inch by 12 inches. And then for the last big patch, we're gonna do three feet by three feet. So that way it covers the entire patch after and it'll reinforce the floor super well because as you can see, those holes in there are not looking too hot right now. This entire boat a few days ago was pretty bad. The entire floor fell out, so I had to go underneath it and retape it. But now we're gonna make it look good. For this process, I recommend using an electric scissor just because it makes the cuts faster and you don't have to sit there like cutting every time. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull the spool out, take as much as you feel comfortable with, and then we're gonna cut it into a big square, theoretically. So we're gonna come from this one. If I was sitting there with a regular scissor, that would have taken forever. So now we're gonna move over to the table and we're gonna start cutting out patches eight by 12, eight by 15, so on and so forth. We're gonna start patching the boat and then we're gonna put a big three by three on after at the end. We got all of the pieces cut out. That's an eight by 12 times 20, eight by 15 times 21, 12 by 15, 24 pieces, 36 inches by 14 inches, seven of those, and then three feet by three feet, eight pieces of those. So the plan is to work from the back of the boat to the front of the boat, but we're gonna start in sections. So we're gonna start in the stern slash transom, which this is. Then we're gonna work midship, halfway through midship. Then we're gonna work second half midship and to the back. So the plan is we're gonna start off with the eight by 12s and one hole, for example, and we're gonna kind of like do a crisscross pattern. Same with that one and that one and the rest of the holes in the bone. So now it's time to mix some resin and get these pieces going. So this, oh, heavy. This is lamination resin. This is the good stuff in fiberglass work. This hardens and cures your fiberglass to your other fiberglass, basically. So what you want to do is get a bucket, one of these little contraptions. I like to use this beaker just because it kind of helps me get the measurement for the hardener. You get the hardener, you put it in here, you mix some of this into this bucket, you mix it together. I've let this sit for a while, so if you let your hardener sit for a while or, or anything like that, you should definitely mix it before you put the hardener in, so that way it's, you know, chunk, any chunks in there will get blended up. So then you take it, you squeeze it, and pour it in, you mix it together, use a three inch roller, like this. Put your piece of fiberglass on here, roll it out, wet it out, and that's in the term of fiberglassing, wetting means uh, getting it all laminated and everything. Place it inside the boat into one of the little holes right there. And then you gotta do it for every single one of these, working pretty quickly, because this stuff hardens your lamination resin pretty quickly. So, let's get started. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to take the hardener, pour it into here, and we're gonna mix this together, and then we're gonna start laying some glass inside the boat. So from here, we're gonna take this roller with the resin, roll it out onto here with a piece of wood, kind of get a good bond. And then we're gonna get some of these little pieces. I decided to do something else for the keel, so that way we go all the way up the middle of the keel and make it super strong and then put the bigger piece on top. So you wanna put the mat side down, which is this, inside the boat first, and then this side goes up. So you wanna wet both sides, get all the air bubbles out, and then we'll wet the inside of the boat too.
camera died because I was getting a time lapse for you guys, but this is the progress I've made so far. So I'm working in sections. So I got all of from that corner to this corner to right here before this crack and I'm right there. So tomorrow we're gonna continue day two. All of this glass that we put down yesterday dried up. As you can see, much harder than up there in the bow. Uh, for an area like this with a hole, we're gonna have to double this up with another piece later, but we can do that later. The plan today is to work from the area we stopped yesterday right here and all the way to the bow. My camera just cuts off whenever it wants now, but uh, I wanted to give you guys an update. I'm halfway to the middle of the midship. I finished all the transom. As you can see, all of that is new glass. That is old glass, and then this is all old glass, and that's new glass right in the keel. So we're gonna continue this way, up to the bow. As you can see, the boat is finally glassed. Every single hole in there is covered with new fiberglass and I couldn't be happier with the results. The most time consuming portion of this process was definitely walking over to the table, wetting the piece of glass, walking back to the boat and laying it down and getting all the air bubbles out. If you have two people, it's much easier, don't get me wrong, because one person can get wetting the glass and one person can be laying it down. I can go about this two ways in the next video, but I can't give you too much information yet, so stay tuned. I appreciate you all for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next one.